Hi, so good day and welcome to Caritel Blockchain Talk. I'm Hallam Hope, your host here in Barbados, where we focus on educating young people and adults, institutions, about blockchain technology, cryptocurrency, and the opportunities that this technology may have in transforming their lives and our economies here in the Caribbean. Well, 2019 has been a very, very uh, interesting year of developments, many developments. We were able to uh, take our numbers to just over 200 students, and in 2020, we plan to educate another 300 students or so, another 400 students. You know, we'll take it to the, uh, maybe quadruple the number, possibly, in 2020. And the reason we are focused on education, the youth, is because simply very few people in Barbados and for that for ma that matter the wider world are familiar with what the opportunities are for jobs careers uh, for income expansion in the technology of blockchain and cryptocurrency so it's not taught at schools uh, our politicians don't get it our, our bureaucrats don't get it our parents and uh, you know moms and dads are not familiar with what the technology is uh, so how indeed can our children uh, plan their careers uh, regardless of whether they're studying at secondary school or at tertiary education such as university. So we see a, a, a chasm there, a, a very major need, critical need to educate young people so they can plan what they want to do in the near future. 2019 has been a very interesting year in that we saw a number of major developments, both pro and con. Uh, I would say 2019 has been quite a year of fake news. Uh, we've had a lot of misinformation, individuals, uh, you know, a lot of uh, stories at a very prominent international level where blockchain and cryptocurrency is seen as something that's really very, very bad. It's not needed. It's not as good as fiat currencies. Um, a whole lot of fake and misinformation being spread internationally and locally. So that's one thing that we're up against, trying to uh, put people right in terms of the real facts, not the fake news, but the real facts. Yeah. Uh, we've also saw tremendous developments in the area of institutions. More and more international institutions have got involved in the technology. We now see agriculture uh, being used along with blockchain in Jamaica. Globally, the application and the projects have just grown exponentially. And we're not saying that blockchain is a panacea. What we are saying is that more and more countries are recognizing that they need to place emphasis on it. So, for example, in France, they made it mandatory that at high school, their students have to be taught about blockchain and cryptocurrency. You know, these are sort of progressive steps being taken. Uh, in Germany, for example, we're seeing a whole lot of effort in terms of blockchain technology and investments. And all around the world, we are seeing a greater emphasis on this new technology, which we really do not and cannot afford to have pass us by. Internationally as well, we are seeing a lot of challenges. The Financial Action Task Force, for example, in June, they came up with an edict, which is totally uh, not based in any form of law. But it, they're attempting to provide this, these rules that exchanges, cryptocurrency exchanges, ought to be regulated in the same way that commercial banks are. And of course, ex these exchanges are not commercial banks. The technology is totally different. And what we're doing by implementing these rules in the Caribbean and in Barbados, if we <laughs> go that far, is to really create an, an unfriendly investment environment for the millions of dollars that could be flowing into the economy at a time when it's very much needed because we still have not recovered um, at the individual level from the global recession of 2008. Yeah, So by providing an image that we are an unfriendly country as far as cryptocurrency and blockchain is concerned and that uh, we are implementing these financial action task force rules which Jamaica has found to have resulted in a loss of millions and millions of dollars in remittances and which have actually you now being applied in the Cayman Islands. We are presenting this wrong type of investment image that we need to. And you know these rules are certainly they're not based on any laws. They're, they're and they're being applied to sovereign countries uh, with the threat that they could be blacklisted if they don't apply them. Yeah. So these are some of the challenges that we have. 
Additionally, uh, globally, we've seen this battle between the United States and China. We see China moving towards its own, going to have its own digital currency. And we're seeing that there's still continuing growth in terms of use of quantitative easing, printing of money, which hovers the prospect of another recession uh, uh, in 2020. Yeah, So it's against this background that against the background of fake news and misinformation that we have a continuous struggle and need all support that we can, financial support, moral and technical support, institutional support to educate our young people about the real opportunity, the real jobs, the real income generating possibilities, how their careers could be shaped, how they could become uh, entrepreneurs in, in some of these areas of application of the technology. That's the real crux of the job that we are faced with against these forms of opposition because we're really failing in our duties and our responsibilities to our young people if we do not create this knowledge, explain these things, hold the workshops, the talks, the sessions, develop the curricula that we are working on. And in 2020, I can say that we have several major plans. We are looking to deepen our relations with a number of partners at the institutional and corporate level. And we are pushing, really, going to be pushing very hard, really, to spread this information and the, and the real news and, and knowledge about the opportunities that young people have in the area of this technology. Yeah, so it's been a challenging year in 2019, but it's been a very, very productive year as well. We've seen a lot of fantastic changes, and we are looking forward to 2020 with a whole lot of hope that it wouldn't be all about fake news, it wouldn't be all about the negative news, it, it will no longer be hearing about the wild, wild west. It's not about the wild, wild west. It's about understanding the opportunities that could shape, shape the new economies in the Caribbean. Yeah. So I'm Hallam Hope. I thank you and for listening to this podcast. Blessings. We are happy to uh, be contacted. Uh, if you're interested in doing any podcast, you're interested in hearing about any form of knowledge or education you're interested in getting. We will hold any various events, you know, uh, seminars, workshops, which we've done in the past. And we're looking to broaden that in 2020. Thank you for listening again to this podcast. All the best for 2020.